Good afternoon. Hey, how you doing? Mm. Welcome into uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads. My name is Graham Day, and I'm joined by Mr. Bib. I'll read Bib. Hello, Graham. Hello. 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 I'll read. Welcome into uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads. My name is Graham Day. Joined by Bib. As I've just mentioned, uh, we are Ice Cream Uploads, and in true ice cream fashion, this is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, if we do say so ourselves. We are live right now on Twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads and the time is 10 a.m ish 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 we go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m ish the ish is because we work in video games and when it's busy then things move around which is basically all year round all year round so yeah if we start we aim for 10 a.m it could be 11 could be 12 1 2 3 our four, I think we've had once as well. So it could be whatever. <laughs> 10 a.m. ish. The best way to uh, get notified though is to do drop a follow on the channel, and that way you do know when we go live. You might not be watching this on Twitch though. You might be watching it in other places because we do go live on Twitch, but we do turn the stream into a podcast, a video on YouTube, and an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. So there's lots of places where was it like 160,000 people have watched and listened to this podcast on demand, which is and obviously, it's 400,000, Graham. Oh, I mean, about, about 4 million, 5 to yeah, 12 yeah. million people <laughs> per day. Yeah. Uh, 260,000 people have watched and listened to this podcast on demand. So if you are in the chat, please do feel free to get involved because there is tons and tons and tons of people that do watch and listen on demand. And they can't speak to us. They can't get involved because we will give you our thoughts and impressions and then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions and then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. So please, please do get involved. Before we jump into said thoughts and impressions, though, we well, we want to, want to talk, about, talk to you about a few things. First of all, exclamation mark loot drop. Obviously, subscribers to the channel get prizes and shout out to Timeless, Pirate Lou, UK, and a bunch of other people and Lake who has just dropped a sub, as I was saying that. Perfect timing. Nice. All these people supporting the channel with uh, raids and subs and, and gifties and stuff over the last few days, so we appreciate that very, very much. Thank you very much, Lake, for 19 months. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, before we jump into the news, obviously, I wanted to mention exclamation mark loot drop. Type that in the chat if you don't know what it is. Basically, one one subscriber every month gets a prize from us because we appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, as well as that, we are supported by Insert Coin, exclamation mark Insert Coin. We are supported by Astro for our headsets, exclamation mark Astro, and GT Omega, exclamation mark GT Omega, surprising light for our chairs. <laughs> but we're also supported by brands in the video games industry. Hits the uh, transition button to, to go over to Bibby Stream. You may have noticed that that, that I was taking all the plaudits sat over here with my uh with my uh PGA 2K23 <laughs> shirts, but uh, it was Bibby that was putting in all, all the legwork. I believe, Mr. Bib, we've just had some content rolling out, right? We have had some content rolling out, Graham. The embargo yesterday was lifted at 3 p.m. Uh, for us to be able to talk about uh, the new PGA Tour 2K23 game and the, specifically the top golf mode. Um, you may have, well, you definitely would have heard that we went down to uh, 2K studio, uh, 2K studios, take two uh, headquarters last month. It was last month now. It was, it? Yeah, it was September. games gone week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, last month we went down to uh, take two studio, uh, take two house. I think it's called Take Two Hours. Anyway, uh, to get hands on with the PGA Tour 2K23 game, uh, we got to play a little bit of it, and then we got hands on with the Top Golf mode specifically on Wednesday, with the embargo being up on Thursday. So we got to play it, got to record some stuff, uh, and then obviously put that out yesterday, which I am super happy with, despite having like 19 hours to be able to <laughs> record it. Sorry, download it, record it, edit it upload it um within that time frame obviously it's, it was quite tight but we managed to do it so yeah uh if you do want to go back uh and have a look at that i've just put the link in the chat if you could please just click it leave it on in a tab so wait it's only two minutes long it's not the longest video in the world it's very concise it's very top level or should we say top golf uh in terms hey. of what you can expect from the mode uh and what exactly top golf is if you aren't the golf connoisseur um like i am well, the, well, yeah, um, it's a fantastic mode. I was going to say, me. the link is in the chat. Bibby just put the link in the chat. I'm going to give you your, your a teaser of 10 seconds of the video. This is the video live on youtube.com forward slash ice cream Hello and welcome back to Ice Cream Uploads. We are delighted to say that we have once again been given early access to yet another PGA Tour game by 2K Sports. After and that's it. That's all you're getting. Oh, we've been given access to another PGA game by 2K Sports. Oof. 
No more. No more. If you want to see it, as Bibi mentions, do click the link. Anyone watching this, please ask your friends to go and click the link. Um, obviously, you can sub to the channel if you want on YouTube. It's free to do that. You can like the video. I mean, if if you've got nothing better to do today and you think, do you know what? I just want to I want to throw some good out into the world. Obviously, you can watch Bibby's video, which is a good video. But if you think I've got nothing else to do, watch the video, drop a like, sub to the YouTube and then put a comment down. The reason I'm asking you to do, to do all that stuff and the reason every other YouTube video in the world just goes hit like, comment, subscribe and stuff like that is because every person that does that makes you, uh, YouTube think, oh, this is good stuff. Let's show it to someone else. And if they do it and they go, Ooh. so basically you help the channel grow by doing that sort of stuff. That's the reason why you, you see that stuff all the time. What the fuck? Here he is. Gifty O one two three. Woo! <laughs> Gifty O one two three is back. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Nietzsche dropping five gifties. Benno Wilson, Anarchy Max, J Moore, Marty, and Aging Superhero. All friends of the channel. That's that's two lots of fives we've had over the past few days that have all gone to people that have been into the stream. Yeah, I love it when when this happens. It's nice to see new faces, but it's nice to see the people that do hang around getting gifts as well. Nietzsche. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Thank you very much for the five howdy. gifties. Howdy. Uh, Howdy ha. <laughs> uh, we are 30 seconds away from a hype train, which is good because if I say at that point, we don't get the hype train. I can just go, thank you very much. Don't have to don't have to do any more now. We'll just leave it there. Cheers, boys. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump back up, though. I can see Gagad said, good after morning, gents. Good after morning, Gagad. How are you doing? Good JMK morning, dropping him with the horn. Story of his life. <laughs> <laughs> He's always pitching. It. It's a, works hard, plays hard. It's always hard. <laughs> good, good morning, JMK Precision. Ooh, P3. Three, yeah. Ooh, P. Good after morning. Oh. No, I'm just not having it all. <laughs> too, you're having too, too much time, too much air time. No, I'm just not having it all. No. Three. Oh, P3. Okay, there you go. Finish it. Nice. Uh, I'll read Precision. How are we doing? Chris Bo. Happening troops. Oh, I think I think we must have got like a go live notification in 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 Scotland because we've got Gagad, Crispo, and Precision. Yeah. I mean, is it, is it, we I could say we're the UK's number one video game podcast. We're Glasgow's number one video game podcast. Let's go, <laughs> baby. Uh, and Lake, hey subs. Actually, um, I kind of forgot to cancel your sub. Do you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't mind. It's that's good enough for me. We'll have it. Crispo says, "Bibby has a, has a lovely beard." There you go. Nice. Yeah, I do. Yeah, boy. Um, I'm just resetting some of my phone. Bosh, there we go. Uh, and then we got to Nietzsche dropping in with a howdy and all of the subs. God damn it. Uh, hope you find gentlemen are doing well today. Better for seeing you, love. I'm on my lunch. Uh, you're on your lunch. It's not the best place for it, mate. You should probably put it in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Classic dead banter. <laughs> you're welcome. Nice. Uh, stuffed Glasgow full of Ouija's. <laughs> <laughs> patter <laughs> yeah I mean I appreciate the fact that you just said patter because it sounds like you were supporting me then whereas it could easily be shit patter we, we both I know that I'm aware of it that's the game we're playing but I appreciate the fact that you left it open to interpretation and I will interpret it as good patter so nice let's go baby um uh full of Ouija's as in the board yes that's it although uh, Ouija board spelt like O-U-I-Z-X nine shoe underscore umbrella <laughs> g or something like that so yeah i don't know it's a weird word anyway tell you what else is weird me i don't know i'm trying to find some sort of tedious link to get it into call of duty because that's not really weird but there we go <laughs> <laughs> so we are here to bring you video game news and today we have a few stories for you starting off with something that chris Paul was actually telling me about last night um and that was the uh, the cod next live stream did anyone tune into that there was like five hours of content um, from COD, from Modern Warfare 2 last night. He started off with like a grandiose look at this huge setup. 200 global content creators, each sat in a Modern Warfare branded gaming chair at their own PC with multiple monitors and ring lights and, and all of the peripherals that you'd need to get your live stream from that one location. Imagine how much fucking bandwidth that'd need. Fucking 200 Mate, in a cost of living crisis, imagine how much electricity is running through that. I know. Running through that gaff. Everywhere oh, else, you know. it, like if it was in LA, you could just imagine downtown LA just going. <laughs> 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 
But uh, yeah, it, no, it, me, it, I just plugged my phone into charge. It. <laughs> 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 well, um, they had uh, it looked it looked great. The set looked great, as you'd expect from Activision Call of Duty. Um, and then they went and now for the first time ever it, this is maybe not those words i'm just getting the building up to we have <laughs> the first ever exclusive look at modern warfare 2's new launch trailery thing um and then they put it on the screen it was on for like 20 seconds and then you just got 30 seconds of darkness <laughs> you could just yeah. hear the trailer great this is the this yeah. is the audio description version of the trailer let's go uh so then randomly after it finished they just played it again <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sh- shout out to the uh, commentary team who was like, "There you go, that launch trailer was so good, we played it twice." So I was like, "Yes, yeah. that's that's a good way to cover it off." But it was decent. It's decent. The, the game looks interesting enough. It looks interesting enough. I'm I'm actually I'm excited to see Call of Duty game getting back to Modern Warfare. Whilst it's good to, to jump into precision streams and watch him kill a few we dafties. Um, yeah, we dafty. It's 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 still like like. Yeah, the vanguardy weapons and stuff. Give me, give me the fucking the holograph. Who's the fucking yeah? So now, yeah, now we're getting back into modern warfare. Beautiful times, beautiful times. Anyway, we will kick off with a modern warfare story. Modern warfare two multiplayer and warzone two point have been revealed. Swimming, third person mode, and more. Modern warfare two's multiplayer mode also has been shown off. So we'll jump into that as our first news story of the day. We'll then jump into other stories. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection has finally got a PC release date. Resident Evil Village uh, has been shown in third person. The new third person mode coming to the game has been showcased at Tokyo Game Show 2022. Then we'll go to the Discord story that we had to shelve the other day. Discord is now uh, available for everyone on Xbox consoles. And it's Friday, so we will wrap up with something that we like to call hashtag I was trying to find a musical instrument. <laughs> oh, I've got one. Oh, oh. Uh, can you play Wonderwall while you sing free game? <laughs> I, ne- I nearly spoiled it. Hashtag. Free game Friday. <laughs> I mean, Discord absolutely mutilated it, but still. We just got blank, blank, blank. <laughs> That's all I played. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Discord, Discord didn't mute. Oh, there we go. Nice. There you go. Uh, GG's, babe. Um, and now, Wonderwall. Let's go. So, yeah, those are the stories today. Before we jump into them, though, uh, Mr. Bib. Yeah. Is there plans for any Modern Warfare 2 content on this channel? Well, Graham, it's a bloody good job that you brought it up because I might have completely forgot that we had it until we started covering the story. But yes, thank you to the <laughs> kind guys over at Activision. They have gifted us both two open beta codes for us to be able to play as and when it goes live, I believe at 6 p.m. tonight. But that's a little bit too early for me. So we've got it listed at half past seven, oof, which oof. is perfect timing for us, in my opinion. <laughs> nice. Um, right in the sweet spot. So yes, we'll be going live with some Modern Warfare 2 stuff tonight, which is great because it's been a long time since I've streamed on a Friday. A long time since we've done some content on Friday evening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just want to point out as well, um, Bibby did say they've gifted us both two codes. No, they've gifted us both one code. They gave us two codes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so Chris Paul said, Giz it. No, you're not having it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, another oh, yeah. Okay, let's jump into the news then. Talking about Modern Warfare, we will be playing the game tonight. Well, I say we. Bib definitely will be. I, I, I am aiming to jump in as well. Uh, but we will we will see what the day yeah. holds. Uh, but for now, this is the first over of the day. Written by Jordan Midler at VGC. Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and Warzone 2.0 revealed swimming third person mode and more. Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer mode has also been shut off. Nice. So jumping into the article then. A new Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and Warzone 2 uh, Warzone 2.0 trailer has shown off some of the new mechanics coming to the next generation of Call of Duty. Revealed during the COD Next showcase event, the trailer reveals that players will be able to stand on top of vehicles, deploy new equipment and more. The trailer also I'm just going to stop for a second. Imagine all of the things that's in the new Call of Duty game. All the things that's in the new Call of Duty game. <laughs> Jordan Midler is a great journalist, by the way. It's really funny on social media as well. But <laughs> he says, the COD Next showcase event revealed that players can stand on top of vehicles. <laughs> that's where we begin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. I mean, you could do that in, in previous CODs, but still. nice. Anyway, uh, the trailer also reveals a new third person mode, which will be highlighted in the third person only playlists. Uh, let me hit play on this video whilst we're in it oh it's one of those built-in video jobbies that you have to kind of scroll to go there you go nice i'll leave that playing so this is the trailer that played twice on the uh, broadcast last night 
So new water physics was also highlighted in a panel following the trailer. The upgraded water will now allow players to dive, swim, and hide from enemies in maps featuring water. I'm going to say it's PUBG's other five years, but okay, we'll move on. Mo <laughs> movement mechanics have also been updated with new mantling, diving, and other movement abilities added to the game. The Warzone 2 map is reportedly called Al Mazra and features 18 points of interest POI. That's according to uh, to a new Try Hard Guides report written by industry insider Tom Henderson, who claims to have received an updated image of the Warzone 2 map confirming its key areas. Um, and there is tons and tons of images in this stream. Jobby, Jobby, hey, Jobby. Mm. Um, so there's tons of images in this uh, news article. We can share the link if you do want to take a look at those. There's a lot in there, obviously. Um, once we start talking, I will uh, flick through a few of them, but if you want to see them for yourself, there you go. Bibs drop the link in the chat. Uh, Henderson said the Warzone 2 map has not changed significantly since an earlier leak, pictured below, but uh, that number of POIs have been updated with new names. Uh, the Warzone 2 release date may have been revealed last month via what is a report. Uh, what is reportedly a leaked into Internal Activision document, which listed it as launching on Fatman Dave's birthday, November the 16th, which is about two to three weeks before my birthday, which is December the 3rd, just in case you were curious. It doesn't say it on the article because Jordan Middle forgot to put it in, but I added it in for you. <laughs> like, nice, nice, nice. Uh, so there you go. Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer was on 2.0 revealed at an event. Swimming, third person mode, this new decoy. Uh, bombs that you throw out that will have some dude that just pops up so someone comes in and shoots him this wall hanging you can hang off a wall and, and traverse down the edges of it pop back up and pop some shots off as well uh, as it mentions there third person mode so you can play like you would see a PUBG stream or something not just FPS but over mm -hmm. the shoulder and all that jazz what's taking lots of places you could potentially been, uh, begin where would you like to start Bip? what are your thoughts my first thought is it's mentioned Warzone and that is not my bag. I'm not that overly interested in it. Um, the way that the, the map evolution might be or whatever, it's just not my bag, Graham. It, it's probably something that I'm never, I'm never going to play again. Um, I, Battle Royales as it stands, you know my stance on them. Like PUBG, I can take it or leave it. When I, when I play it, I enjoy it, but I don't play it all that often. So when I jump in, it might be like once every three weeks or something and i might play it with you for two hours or so like i did last wednesday i never even thought about playing it again since fortnite i do enjoy playing fortnite that is the one battle royale game that i'll jump into and have an absolute blast with i don't know whether or not it's because yeah, i've got a ton of challenges to tick off every single day i've got dailies i've got um mini campaigns within it i don't know whether or not it's the fact that it's basically just the funko pops of um of battle royale but there's something about wars uh, wars on that i don't like playing i don't want to play but i enjoy watching others do it oh i love wars on i i would i know there's not that many major established brs there's probably only four but i i always think oh wars on's in my top three which is which is not that hard when there's only four uh, <laughs> but i mean there isn't there's obviously more but for me there's only really four that kind of come to mind obviously number one for me would be pubg standard Number two or three is Warzone and Fortnite, depending on what mood I'm in. Um, I, I really like Warzone uh, to the point where if I am if I want to choose uh, a change of pace, so this is, uh, this is a phrase you hear me say all, all the time, change of pace. PUBG is slow and clunky, but is quite strategic compared to other games. Not to the point where it's, it's a strategy and RTS game, and it's not to the point where it's a survival game, but you can implement strategy in PUBG more than any other BRs, in my opinion. Um, then I want to change your pace. I want something that's a bit quack uh, quacker. Nice, quicker. Nice. <laughs> a bit quacker. A bit quicker. Something that where you just, you're running and gunning, and it doesn't really matter about moving your team. You can just jump out, fucking dolphin dive, uh, drop shots, fucking jump shots and all the rest shotgun to the face and, and and that and that is where call of duty comes into me that 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 full call of duty feel in warzone oof, nice fortnite is a game that has much more content going on i never feel like the content i mean the the content that exists in um for any Call of Duty game really i don't feel it ever really truly rings through into the game for me uh Whereas the the content in Fortnite, you you feel that the map has changed from the previous season. You know mm -hmm. that 
there's something going on because there is Darth Vader and Stormtroopers running around. There is a big feck-off hole in the sky. There are these little things that you crush with your hands that make you jump through the air 50 foot at a time. There's new weapons, new backpacks. All the missions are pushing you to use things. Whereas Call of Duty and Warzone has more of a consistency to me. And, and I think that's why I like them both because they're both very different things. They're both quite fast. Yeah. But one is themed and seasonal, whereas the other one is is more traditional but fast paced warfare. So that's that's why I like the pair of them. The, the fourth mm-hmm. one, for those that are wondering what my other one is in the top four, is is Apex, which I'm just not interested in. It just does not does not capture my attention. It's all of the the pace and the speed that uh, Call of Duty has, with the seasonal and theming stuff that Fortnite has, but just not seasonally themed as good. And the yeah. pacing and the weapons and stuff are just not as good. And it's just shield simulator for me so yeah so you know, I, I never went back to play after playing it at gamescom do you remember what we played rings of elysium like three years ago was it ring of rings of elysium yeah like i noticed yesterday when we, when i was in the office that it's still installed on the gaming pc and i thought do you know what i need to i need to give that one a go again because i remember when it first came out it wasn't very well optimized it wasn't the best game in the world but it was fun when we played it at um at, at Gamescom, Gamescom. so I, that it would I could be, one be wrong. That I'd like to jump back in. I could be wrong, but I think it has been sunsetted. Uh, has it, it? Yeah, it might still be live, but it, I'm pretty sure there was something on it. Like within the last six months, I heard some streamers or content creators either saying that they've stopped it completely or they've stopped adding to it or something like that. I could right. be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be mixing it up with with something else because there was fucking all sorts of games with similar styles similar designs and then some other games that weren't even similar at all apart from name like ring of elysium and path uh, path of exile uh roa yeah. and poe just for me were the same game yeah. apart from one had a little stick on the bottom of the p to turn it into an r so like <laughs> for ages it, I, I was like confused with that but yeah ring of elysium or rings of elysium, i can't remember if it's plural or single decent game good game um it just was not really unique enough at that point in time to, yeah. to move it away from PUBG and it had nothing that could allow it to compete with Fortnite and obviously Call of Duty is its own mm-hmm. boost uh, but yeah this looked like the, 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 yeah, sorry go on I was going to say this looked good to me obviously there was there was all the stuff that he mentions within there there was third person which I'm going to I'm going to say I felt I, I should have probably been open to that a little bit more than I was not that I'm not open to it it's not the right word but it it was quite jarring to see someone playing Call of Duty and seeing the dude run around on screen <laughs> because Call of Duty is just first person. The, the, like, that's what it is to me. So seeing third person mode just didn't, it felt weird. And it's weird because I play third person PUBG all the time because I'm on console and you kind of have to. Uh, but I always play Call of Duty first person. So yeah, that's bizarre. And I, I'm interested in that as well because one of the issues PUBG has is it has the map queue for all of its maps and all of its different game modes, and then it duplicates the queues by having it in third person, which means it's longer waiting times to get into games. Call of Duty never had that problem because they didn't have as many maps and now uh, many queues, and now they're opening up more queues. So intrigued mm. about that. I wonder if that's a push to get into Asian markets because third person is very, very big in Asia compared to Europe. Europe likes Europe and NA like first person. Asian markets like third person. I wonder if that's Call of Duty's mm. going. Yeah, we'd like a slice of that pie, please. Maybe. I've just actually checked what's available in the Modern Warfare 2 beta today. And I am excited to say, Graham, that yes. search and destroy is in there, baby. <laughs> T- tell you what actually That's might, all I care about. What actually might interest you as well. It doesn't mention it anywhere in this article. And it may have mentioned it in the COD um, Next panels that followed, because I only watched like half an hour or so of it. Um, oh, Precision's going to have a go at it later as well. It smells like a squad to me. It smells like a squad. It stinks a bit. Jack mentioned in the office today that uh, yesterday, sorry, that he's got a cold as well. So Ooh. we are we are stocking up on squaddies, my boy. Nice. Um, well, yeah. One of the other things that mentioned, obviously, there's there's these war zone coming into it. There's third persons and things like that. But I didn't see whether they actually came back to it or not. They said that Modern Warfare Two will be the first one. And and and, and let me stop for a second. They said something that's happening this year. I don't know whether it was Warzone 2 or Modern Warfare 2, just to want to clarify. It might be in Warzone. It might be in the full paid release of Modern Warfare. But they mentioned that this will be the first year ever that they have raids in 
uh, Call of Duty. So for those that play games like your uh, your Warcrafts and stuff, or even Destinies and things like that, there is big campaigns where you need a fire team of a bunch of people to go in and take things down. That is what a raid it is mm -hmm. in my head. Mm -hmm. Call of Duty for the first time ever will have some attempt at raids this year, apparently. That Doesn't mention it me a lot. Yeah, it, 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 that's it, right up the scale. It, it it starts to change my biggest issue with Call of Duty. My biggest issue with Call of Duty is that I don't really feel like I'm playing with a team. I know you, once you start to get to playing with a bunch of people and you're both really good and you can handle your own fights, you win your ones, then you can you kind of move together. You're, but you're like a flock of birds. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything to really help each other. You're just flying along next to each yeah. other. Whereas other games promote more of the team stuff. Raids changes that because you have to Absolutely. work together. So that could be that could be cool. That could be Call of Duty proper cooperatively. If you, I mean, yeah. obviously, if you're playing rank level stuff, then yeah, yeah, you're looking at co-op there. But like, yeah, that that is interesting. That is interesting. I need to pre-order it, man. Do it no, Chris boy. You treat <laughs> treat yourself. Treat you've you've worked hard, love. Treat yourself. Friday. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> uh, let me jump back up. Um... Ouija equals Glaswegian, not spelt like that in Sunderland. It's called Goths Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, third person Modern Warfare 2 looks a bit like uh, Gears. I am aroused. Uh, I, mean, I suppose it does actually. It does actually. It just it, it just felt odd. I mean, that's not me shitting on it either, by the way. It just it will take some getting used to, I think, seeing that. Uh, that's probably only a couple of games or something, but it just it was different. It was different. Uh, Eric Clapton. Is that you? Yes. I don't I don't know yeah. the reference, but okay. <laughs> that was me playing the guitar for Free Game Friday. Oh, okay. There we go. Nice. Uh, codes for all. Um, codes for nudes. Nice. You get a code and you get a code. Everyone gets a code. Okay, no. Um, codes for thumps up. I mean, I can thump you up if you want. It's not really nice, but whatever you're into. Nobody sub until we get codes. God damn. I mean, <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 there you go. There is your code. It ends in 69. <laughs> um, nice. I mean, you didn't say that it had to be a working code. You just wanted a code. There you go. 12 digits. That's a PSN code. That I, I can give you a 25-digit Steam code if you want. It will also be bullshit, but <laughs> just let me know. Yeah. Uh, any news on older Modern Warfare 2 maps? I didn't actually see that. I do like that sort of stuff. I am very much a fan of seeing stuff creatively weaved in. I want to bring that back a little bit as well. We've seen some really cool stuff where old old uh, Modern Warfare maps or old COD maps have been stitched into Verdansk and, and, and the original Blackout map had quite a lot of nods into uh, Call of Duty locations and so on. I don't like it where it's done where you've just got Nuketown Edition 77 and it's like, yeah. okay, Nuketown's been done now. We don't really... You could just stick a bus somewhere and people could get the hint that that was a nod towards Nuketown. Fine, there is other maps other than Nuketown. So if we do get some some crash or or whatever, name your uh, bog, maybe. Name your, name your favourite map from Modern Warfare games and, and throw it in. I mean, it's got to be some sort of high-rise reference in there, right? Right? Right, it's Modern Warfare. So if, if we get something like that in, yeah, I'm happy. Because um, it's, it's not just a... a a meaningless location. It's a location that brings some emotive resonance. You go, okay, I've I've played this game. I've only been in it for for eight minutes, and I already feel like I know where I am here. It's just nice. It's nice. It's nice. Um, I've sickened my mind with the amount of Warzone I've played. Can't wait to rock my brain even more when Warzone Two launches. Yay! <laughs> nice. Uh, I've, I genuinely, I think on my timeline, he is the number one Warzone player. Like, I don't see anybody else playing it nearly as much as he does. Do you know, I think, yeah, probably. You're probably, probably same, same, same. Uh, there is a, another uh, Scottish streamer called Molo87, I think it is, who I, I've dropped in on him a few times. <coughs> um, but even he's like been game hopping recently. I've not seen him on, on um, any COD recently. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Call, yeah, call yeah. Duty if you listen, by the way. I mean, that's not a vouch. Get that man a code. Not 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 Chris Bo though. Didn't need one. Didn't need one. Never pre-ordered it. Uh, Anarchy Max, huge thank you to Nietzsche for the sub. Nice. Yeah. Need to get back to work, lads. Enjoy the rest of the stream. <coughs> uh, enjoy work. <laughs> okay, enjoy, enjoy. Now thank you for dropping in, Chris Bo. Love you. Did you say Graham? I did not. But oh. love you, Chris Bo. <laughs>
Nice. Uh, redeemed. <laughs> Thanks, lads. <laughs> Yay! Nice. Oh, did you miss out on it, Lake? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, let me... I've got another code for... Uh, are you ready, Lake? Fastest finger first. Okay. Go. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So there you go. Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer Warzone 2.0 has been revealed. Massive event. Call of Duty clearly believes in the game that they've got. Um, I also want to... I want to mention something else, as well, actually, before we drop off it. Uh, Call of Duty was opened up to UK regulators again. I did see something on that. UK regulators are now looking back at the acquisition uh, for Activision Blizzard by Xbox, mm -hmm. which is quite huge considering the fact that they were talking last night on the broadcast about Call of Duty will bring cross-platform play. It will bring um, the ability to play Warzone on mobile and console and PC, multiple different formats. They were bringing raids. They were bringing third-person and first-person level content. They were satisfying everyone's needs, Giggity. Um, mm -hmm. And they were just about to be bought by Xbox. So it, it's interesting because... That's not really the time that you want to be saying, look at how big and successful we are and all the plans we've got for the future. Just after, after the industry regulator going, wait, are you too big and successful? So it'd be interesting yeah, to see yeah. whether that has an impact. Because not, not any brand can go out and get 200 creators just, just to make content, let alone flying them all to one location giving them all a PC, two screens, a mouse, a keyboard, a headset, a camera, a chair, the internet required, their funding, their costs to get them there. 200 creators at all, let alone those creators being Ninja, Tim the Tatman, mm. Courage, uh, Pawnee Hoff, a, a European guy that I saw going, and pretty much everyone. I mean, they clearly don't have limitless budget because the, the dock and ice cream uploads weren't at that event. So clearly, there's there's a there's a line that they can't cross. Like mm -hmm. they didn't ask us, and they didn't ask the doc. So we are pretty much the same caliber of creator. So yeah, they clearly they couldn't they couldn't. Yeah, but interesting, interesting. That much money, that that much expenditure. I wonder if that will actually go against Xbox's merger. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I know it's when not I was on one side of the PowerPoint, and there's something there's something wrong with that PlayStation marketing team. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They're not bringing it up. Exactly. It's just exactly. a big arrow pointing towards a news article going, look, this is all you need. Sort it out, mate. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, I know when I was watching Wildcat yesterday, he did say there are some familiar maps, but he couldn't say what they were because of NDE. Yeah, that 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 I would expect. I mean, the um, uh, Tom Henderson, that industry dude that's got images of the map and its key areas and stuff, it did mention in the article something along the lines of it was shared below. Uh Oh, no, actually, is it a different link? Oh, it's a different link. Okay. Uh, that can't be the map. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've linked off to another article that has, um, let me bring it on screen for you now. Uh, Warzone 2 maps POIs are Oasis, Tarak Village, previously called Warzone, Quarry, Rohan Oil, previously Oil Field, Al Masra City, modern city, and so on. So it goes through all these different names. Um, and then it shows you a picture of the map, which is the Warzone map if it was in South Park. <laughs> Come on down to Warzone and have yourself a time. That's, that's not a Warzone map. That's fucking South Park. <laughs> that's incredible. So, yeah, there you go. That's that's what the map is looking like. Water at the bottom, some harbour sort of area, all sorts of stuff. Not the biggest, not the clearest. Uh but yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that actually incorporates the other maps. But anyway, that's enough Warzone talk. As mentioned, don't forget, we will be playing that on uh, the channel tonight, 7.30pm-ish. Do feel free to come back and join us for that then. For now, though, uh, we'll jump into some PC slash PlayStation news. Uh, Tom Ivan at VGC has the story. It says, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection finally has a PC release date. The game is making the jump from console to PC in October. Sony Interactive Entertainment has announced a PC release date for Uncharted, The Legacy of Thieves Collection. The game is now available to pre-purchase on Steam and the Epic Games Store ahead of its release on October the 19th. Legacy of Thie uh, Thieves contains remasters of Uncharted 4 and its expansion, uh, The Lost Legacy. The PS5 version was released in January and Sony originally said players should expect the PC release to follow shortly after. Naughty Dog has also published the PC specifications for the game's 
in a blog post. Um, okay, we'll, we'll go for this next couple of paragraphs and we'll stop there. So, quotes. This version of Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collections is optimized for PC with PC-centric quality of life enhancements such as reimagined UI, scale sliders, GPU and VRAM detection, variable load speed, and so much more. Naughty Dog Senior Communications Manager Rochelle Snyder wrote, she added, for the first time, enjoy a host of graphical adjustments uh, features designed specifically for PC, such as adjustable texture and model quality. An isotropic filtering. Yeah, I'll have a bit of that as well. Shadows, reflections, mm. and ambient occlusion. The game will also feature all new controls and cu customization options and support a range of peripherals, including dual sense and dual shock controllers. <laughs> I mean, this is good news. There's no real negative to this. The, I do a weird one. Not last night. Night before. So this article was announced yesterday. So just the night before, we had a PlayStation... Or was it the night before that? I can't remember now. We had a PlayStation State of Play. Uh, so why are they, a day and a half later, mentioning the Legacy of Thieves collections coming to PC in that? Is that not when you put that sort of stuff in it? Or is it because it's now... A PC game, they're like, yeah, it's not really one of the kids. That's a stepchild that now, so we're not really going to talk much about that one. Yeah, you, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll 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 shout about our kids, but then the stepchildren can get mentioned afterwards. Is it is it that anyway? Good news all round. What are your thoughts, babe? Yeah, absolutely. Game games everywhere. Uh, games for everyone everywhere. <sighs> They've reached critical mass, haven't they? With Uncharted, they're probably not going to make that much money off of it again, unless they but make a new one or they start to remaster them all from the ground up again. So. Yeah, I feel like this is probably the right time to move it over. Um, a new, brand new audience, they'll definitely get a massive influx of cash from this UP from people who are. I mean, if if um, God of, has God of War moved over to the PC yet? Uh, the original one. It has. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that that that's moved over. We've obviously had other PlayStation first party games do that as well. This is just another one that's joining the list. And they have a growing list of uh, first-party PlayStation games that are moving over there. So, yeah, it's definitely going to bring them a lot of money in and a brand-new audience to potentially fuel the fire for a new one. If the numbers are good enough, what do you reckon? Um, what, Sorry, I was I was just distracted by Iceman's code comment in the chat. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you reckon it'll fuel the fire for potentially making a new one? Yeah. Um, with with the... the it's guaranteed to make them money because people, there's a brand new audience for it. People might have a, a brand spanking new gaming PC. And at the time when these were being brought out, either on the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 4, it can look better on your PC. They've got the opportunity to be able to do this again now. So they are going to make a lot of money hand over fist with this. If they end up making a shit ton of money off of it, do you reckon that then gives them the ability to go, do you know what? Maybe it's not time for a reboot, but we can definitely look at making something around this franchise again. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Uh, I think that will already be on the cards because of just how big and how successful that series is. One of my all-time favorite series, Uncharted. Uh, so I think it will just make another game regardless. The reason we're not hearing that is because we've got the big... Um, the Last of Us window. Okay, we've got a TV mm -hmm. series coming soon. We've just had The Last of Us Part 1 um, last week, week before. Uh, so everything Naughty Dog is talking about that and he's looking at that and he's focusing on that. Then we'll go into the uh, the Sony world of God of War Ragnarok. So, okay, we'll, we'll not... Yeah, we'll keep quiet. I wouldn't be surprised if next year we will get some announcements about the future of Uncharted. We could still be years away from it. I mean, it has it is years since we've properly had anything. This is just obviously a remastering uh, or a repackaging of a collection. I do think it will help with that, though. If this still keeps, if there is still proven desire here, I think that will not only add to the Uncharted universe, but I think it will definitely add to the Uncharted universe on PC. If this happens and it does very, very well, then I wouldn't be mm -hmm. surprised if Uncharted hits PS5 and PS4, probably, um, and then like that as it mentioned within this article it will follow shortly after along those lines i bet that shortly will be a little bit shorter if that's the case and not only mm -hmm. that naughty dog at that point will have been used to the uh, procedures for porting a game to pc uh they will have gone through that 
for the Legacy of Thieves collection. If, yeah. I, don't, I don't think they've had one before. I might be wrong. Um, so, yeah, everything will just be smoother. I wouldn't be surprised if we get one leading into an, uh, something else uh, happening very, very quickly afterwards. So, yeah, big move. More players get to experience some of the best games that you could ever play. Um, and obviously in different places, which is a huge, huge bit. Like Baby says, mm. gamers, for every, games for everyone everywhere. Let's go, baby. Um, I assume uh, that was a Modern Warfare 2 code. If so, then no loss. It was it was a, a, a stupid bunch of letters that ended in 6-9. Nice. Uh, and then 6-9, <laughs> and 6-9, then six, nine, six, nine, six, nine. Uh, I know when I was watching Wildcat yesterday, he did say there are some familiar maps. Oh, no, I've done that bit already. Um, or should I say Modern Warfare 5? Yeah. Uh, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> it looks like Mr. Hanky was all over that. Howdy, ha yeah, big brown splodges everywhere. Um, now can we have a code for an actual decent slash original game instead of another copy-paste job? Kappa. So I responded with a code, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, this is this is ironic, because the last game I played with Iceman was FIFA. <laughs> 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 okay, yes. Nice. Yeah, pro clubs action. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny how everyone will play rinse and repeat stuff, but they always have an opinion on other people's rinse and repeat stuff. No, I don't like your rinse and repeat stuff, but I'll, I'm happy enough with my rinse and repeat stuff. Of course you are. Of course you are. Uh, speaking of rinse and repeat stuff and tragic games that nobody plays that really have a lack of enjoyment for anyone that has to watch that shit. Wrong one. Resident Evil. There we go. Nice. Oh, wow, wow. Bibby plays these games. I didn't even realize that that's what I would look at. <laughs> look at Bibby's face. <laughs> he was sat there. Uh, freeze frame. Yeah, exactly. Riz, uh, Riz, Riz, Riz? Uh, Resident Evil Village third person mode showcased in TGS 2022. This is on clutch points and is written by <laughs> Jesse Rich. Jesse Rich. Jesse Rich. Cortez. There we go. I know the last name. I can get that one. But the first mm -hmm. one, I'm sorry. Jesse, I've, I've butchered that, and it's just the way it is. Anyway, during their presentation at TGS 2022, Capcom Showcase, for those that don't know, TGS is Tokyo Game Show. It does say it in the article, but I tried to make it brief, and I eventually just made it more longer by not making it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, so start, during the presentation at TGS 2022, Capcom Showcase, uh, showcased the much-awaited third-person mode for Resident Evil Village. Keep reading to learn more about the showcase along with the Resident Evil Gold Edition, Resident Evil Switch, VR and Mac, and Resident Evil 4. Uh, what we said about rinsing and repeating? Copy and paste it? Let's go. Uh, so Resident Evil Village Gold Edition. So the Gold Edition of Resident Evil Village will include the Winter's Expansion. Winter's Expansion will have three new major features. The first feature is the long-awaited third-person game mode. Starting from Resident Evil 4, the game series adopted a third-person perspective. This is an upgrade from uh, the first three games, uh, fixed camera angles and tank control scheme. When Resident Evil, uh, Evil 7 came out, it switched to a first-person perspective. Resident Evil 8 followed suit. This decision has been very divisive amongst the fan base, with some players going as far as making mods uh, to play change? Okay, to change the game, uh, I guess in play shouldn't be there, uh, to a third-person perspective. Thankfully, the game now has an official third-person mode. Players can now play or replay the game from this new perspective, showing Ethan in all his dad glory. Um, the expansion will also include Shadows of Rose, set 16 years after the base game's event. In it, you play as Rose as she explores a world inside the mind of the Mega My Seat. Uh, the enemies in this story are capable of defeating Rose in one attack, so players must use her powers to help them survive. Finally, the expansion includes the Mercenaries' additional orders. This includes new stages and playable characters. Players can now play as Lady Dimitrescu, or Dimitris, or Dimitris, or Lady D, whatever you want to call her, uh, and Lord Heisenberg, antagonists that the player encounters in the main game. It'll be out October 28, 2022. Bib. Yes. Not going to jump into Resident Evil Cloud or the other stuff yeah. yet. For Don't now, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition thoughts. Massive. Waiting for more content on this. Again, um, a long time ago now, uh, myself and Asim actually did a review on Resident Evil Village, um, and I was undecided as to whether or not I genuinely thought it was a good game. I think it had fantastic moments in there, but there was a lot of things that annoyed me about the game too. I have obviously since then completed the game a couple of times um and each time i play it i think do you know what it's got a bit more sparkle to it this time around um and the fact now that it's gonna have an over the shoulder mode 
a third person perspective, which obviously will resonate with a lot of people who are massively into uh, the over the shoulder stuff from four, five, and six. That resonates with them. Gears of War fans, probably even more so too, as well. Um, but I do feel seven and eight, having it in first person, give it a brand new perspective and a new lease of life into Resident Evil that it absolutely required. Obviously, since the, um, the PT uh, game from Hideo Kojima went live, people have been trying to emulate the terror that you got from that demo. And I think Resident Evil 7 absolutely did that. It was a fantastic game. I love the first person perspective. I think it definitely lended itself well in the village mode in in the village uh game too. Third person feel like a Resident Evil. I'm definitely gonna replay it again in third person. I think it definitely it will add a new dynamic to it. This game so um I do love third person mode now. I think it's miles better than it was back when it first came out on in Resident Evil 4, the original one on GameCube and PlayStation. It's a million miles away from that. I think that when they remade it for Revelations 1, phenomenal. And obviously since then we've had Revelations 2, we've had remakes of 2, 3, and 4s on its way too, which we'll uh, come on to in a, in a couple of minutes. So yeah, having extra, extra modes being put into this, it just makes me want to replay it again, Graham. It makes me want to dig out from the shelf up there, slap it in my console on uh, October 26th, uh, sorry, October 28th, and get stuck into it again, 100%. I just want to point out that you shouldn't play Resident Evil, by the way, Resident Evil 8. There's, there's no reason for you to play Resident Evil 8. Uh, I know there's all these updates that sound cool and stuff, but since Bibby played Resident Evil, I mean, Bibby doesn't look old, but... He looked really, really young when he last played it. So the link in the chat will bring this up. Look at look at baby Bibby's face there. He was about 12 before he played Resident Evil. Look at him. Ah, oh, you wee baby. <laughs> oh, dear. Wee baby baby. Uh, so, wee yeah. Baby, baby. There you go. There's the differences. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, Asim's gone downhill a bit. I mean, look how good he, he used to look there. And now look at him here with his... With his dodgy face going like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, different perspective of rumours when the, it's the old way around yeah. still the same post on the wall still exactly the same locations but a completely different perspective exactly there you go get 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 full 3D spectrum of Bibby's room we'll get one from the yeah. other side shortly nice um, yeah okay jumping back into that article then where he's gone there we go so that's Resident Evil Village Gold Edition. Lots mm. of stuff out of there. It's, from me, uh, from my perspective, I didn't. I did, it was an okay watch. I I think I enjoyed watching it because I was watching someone I know in Bib playing it. Um, uh, I might have enjoyed it, obviously, if there was a creator that I had spent a lot of time watching it. But if I if I just jumped into streams just to see this, I don't think the game would have grabbed me. But seeing more content, seeing more options and stuff being added into that. Um, mm -hmm. it might for, for those that are interested, it will probably add a little, excuse me, a little bit more uh, oomph to it. But mm -hmm. for me, my, my issue was the fact that I like that more psych horror stuff. And I don't know Resident Evil is different from Silent Hill, but yeah, Resident Evil usually has some bits that, that play with your mind. Whereas this was there wasn't that much of that, it was just loud, bombastic. You've got shitloads of ammo, keep shooting, and it felt like more like a yeah. bullet storm ish sort of play on Resident Evil. But uh, moving ahead, Resident Evil Cloud, as mentioned in our previous article. Oh, nice. Capcom is also planning to release Resident Evil to the Nintendo Switch, uh, Nintendo Switch via Cloud Gaming. Uh, alongside the release of uh, the Winter's expansion on October 28th, the expansion, however, uh, will be available for the cloud version on December the 2nd, which is one day before my birthday, 2022. A demo is already up uh, for trial on the Nintendo Game Store. Uh, Resident Evil Village will be available on additional platforms, as you can see there, MacBooks, iMacs, Mac Minis and Mac Studios, and Resident Evil 4 update. So we'll receive more news regarding the Resident Evil 4 remake in next month's Resident Evil Showcase. Slated for release next year, the game will now also include a PS4 port. Originally, the game was only going to be released on PC, Series X, and PS5 and Bibby absolutely just did the most powerful looking sneeze that the world has ever seen. Off, off Mate, screen. I thought my head was going to come off then. <laughs> I, I, I nearly give myself a stitch. It was that bad. <laughs> Broke a rib. <laughs> Honest to God, I'm so glad that I managed to mute my microphone in time. <laughs> Fucking hell. Took my breath away, that. <laughs> so it seems you without breath. Bib, thoughts? <laughs> yeah. the, the cloud stuff. I understand there's a purpose for it because obviously they cannot make Resident Evil Five, uh, sorry Resident Evil uh, Village, 
look as good as it does on a PlayStation 5 on a Nintendo Switch. And the best way of doing that is essentially via, via the cloud, like a like a GeForce Now um, or for a Google Stadia or something along those lines or an X Cloud. Do it like that, and you can have all the processors around the world pulling all that information through, sending it over to your Switch. It doesn't have that much uh, of a performance issue then. It's just these are the types of games that I want to be able to play like on a plane or something like that. Just even if like there's a lot of pretty games on the Nintendo Switch. You we talk we always talk about the likes of Doom, we always talk about the likes of Crisis and things like that, that they have been able to get and look very, 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 very good. Can it play the Crisis, Nintendo mate? Switch. Yeah, can it play Greg? Can it run Crisis, mate? It can, mate, but not but not Resident Evil, mate. <laughs> but there's <laughs> There's definitely a the 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 hundred percent would have been able to put these games on a cartridge or on the e-store for you to be able to download to it rather than having to stream it. I don't understand why they do this cloud gaming. It's not far enough along yet for people to be able to take the meat of it and be able to play it properly in a state that they should be able to. I don't understand why they're doing it just via cloud. A little bit annoying. It's such a shame but, as well because like you're talking about traveling. Like this is the kind of game you want to play on a plane. Imagine you were going to Florida. You're looking at 8 to 12 hours. Um, my dad! Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome in, dude. How we doing? How we all doing? How's the games been? Thank you very much for the raid. Appreciate that. We are talking about Resident Evil. Uh, Good morning. All of the stories. Resident Evil Village third-person mode was showcased at TGS. We've spoken about that, but we're talking about the fact that Resident Evil will be a cloud game on the Nintendo Switch right now. Um, Mrs. Weber, hey! Catch these hands. How are we doing? How are we doing? Hola. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're flying to Florida, you're looking at eight to mm. ten hours, maybe twelve if you've got fucking back uh, winds against you and all that sort of shit. Uh, and then the same back. So over the course of one holiday, one trip, one whatever, uh, you could finish Resident Evil Village. So the mm. fact that you need a, a like a a constant connection to be able to play those games just instantly wipes that out which is a shame because yeah. that's exactly the, the right kind of game and that's exactly the right kind of experience that you'd want on a portable handheld console whilst you were sat in your traveling seat obviously you'll need to have options for power backup because your switch wouldn't last for fucking 12 whatever hours yeah. especially <laughs> if you need an active connection but yeah it's uh -huh. such it's such a missed opportunity and I, and i don't feel that's i feel like we've had this conversation before that's not a resident evil village thing that's a shame for Resident Evil Village players, but that's definitely a Nintendo Switch thing, which which is then a shame for everyone. Catch these hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no worries, buddy. I'm ready and running, mate. Just got to do some work. We'll be back. No worries, dude. Enjoy work as much as you can. Uh, hopefully as much as you've enjoyed the games. Hey. Uh, okay. After Resident Evil Cloud, we go to the additional platforms. I think we'll uh, scan over that. And Resident Evil 4 update. The update was... Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no update really. It'll be coming. Yeah, out. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> nice little bit of clickbait. Get get people in with the uh, the new Resident Evil news, and then say it will be coming next month. Let's go. Nice. Um, so it's coming along nicely. Are you looking forward to next month's Resident Evil showcase? Has that been announced yet? Do we have a date for that? Uh, I don't know if they have a date, but they definitely did announce it during the um, during the conference. Well, I say the conference. It was like a ten minute video uh, where they showcased the, all of this information that we're reading now. So. I don't know if they've got a date for it, but yes, of course. I, I love Resident Evil showcases because there's always something batshit crazy. And uh, can you? <laughs> they haven't mentioned Reverse again, Graham. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing more on that. Yay! Uh, when that comes through. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, uh, Resident Evil Four. I do think I'm not. It's it's not make or break. I'm not saying that at all because the Resident Evil Two and Three Two was by far. I mean, the original Resident Evil Two was my favorite game of all time the remake is now my favorite game of all time it's actually eclipsed it which i didn't think was possible i mean it literally says it, do it just above your head so if that's not a vouch yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well you actually got me from this for my birthday that was on the 9th of december last year oh nice um, that's so the 9th that's, of december just the confirmed the 9th of december that's six days after the 3rd of december which is my birthday Absolutely. If you don't know what the number nine looks like, it's on the back of Costolo's <laughs> shirt, which is listed behind me there as well. Interesting um, thing about that number nine, if you spin it around uh, upside down, it turns to a six. And if you take that away from nine, it goes back to three, which is my birthday in December. <laughs> nice, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Resident Evil 3, fantastic game, original one. Resident Evil 3 remake, good game. Not fantastic. There was a lot of things in there that should have been included that wasn't. Uh, definitely an oversight. But 
Resident Evil 4 is that that is the pedestal for a lot of people. That is at the very, very top of the Resident Evil tree. So I'm excited to play it because I think it's going to be a banger. However, there might be a few curveballs in there that people aren't expecting, which is the worry because we wasn't expecting the the clock tower to be taken out of the third one. And it was, which shouldn't and it got replaced by a boss battle in the middle of the courtyard, which was fucking shocking. But yeah, I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to see it because it's going to look beautiful. The, the 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 Resident Evil engine or the Reach of the Moon engine is possibly my favorite engine on the market. It's stunning. So just more of that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, throwing a curveball. Yeah, last time we removed the clock tower. This time we just removed all of the impacts <laughs> and history of Umbrella Corp. So zombies don't <laughs> exist. And neither do all of the villains. Let's oh, go! <laughs> Leon's, uh, Leon's not in it this time either, so uh, you have to deal with that one. But yeah, I, again, I'm super looking forward to playing more of it. I can't wait to see more of it. I mean, I I've mentioned this a million times on this podcast. I don't like looking at video game trailers anymore because I do believe that they are deceiving a lot of the time. But I, I know what to expect from the RE engine. So when they did actually show a little bits, a little clips of Resident Evil 4 during the trailer, I was like, that's my guy. That's Leon right there, and he's looking as beautiful as ever as he did in the Resident Evil 2 remake game. So, yeah, more of that, please. Uh, so, Bibby about. says the RE engine, which doesn't stand for Resident Evil engine, as he found out uh, a couple of months ago, stands for Reach for the Moon engine, um, uh, is his favorite engine. Nietzsche says, Thomas is my favorite engine. He's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Great input. Love to see uh, it. Nice. <laughs> he also says, just so we're all clear, your birthdays are in December, right? Yeah, December 9th yeah. for Bib and December 3rd for me. Uh, so if you if anyone would like me to share my Google calendar with that date, let me know and I will fire you over. Yeah, I mean, don't worry, I'll remember uh, remind you every single day <laughs> for like three months countdown. I mean, we're yeah. in the three months countdown, so I, I mean, expect this to just keep ramping up. That's all we say. Nice. Uh, to jump to terrify you? No. It's 100 days till Christmas. Oh, see, I, I don't mind that. I'm a big, big fan of Christmas. I, I love the love all the countdown. As soon as it's December the 4th, because, you know, December 3rd's my birthday. I don't even mention that. Uh, Is that we, when your tree goes up? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not against it going up before that. I mean, I like my, my tree up for, for, for weeks so that I get my efforts worth. Going up into the loft and getting all those lights and redecorating all that shit and fucking hanging shit up on the roof. And, yeah, definitely. I'm not, not one of these like, oh, it needs to be Christmas Eve or 20th of December before I put it up. I'm like, <laughs> that's effort for five days to, to a couple of weeks. So start of December is good for me. Um, but Daniel's like, nope, it's your birthday on the 3rd. So Christmas doesn't start until after your birthday's been. I was like, nice. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Plan. Um, blah, blah. You have the same birthday as my friend does. That's incorrect. Uh, your friend has the same birthday as me, and even if he got there <laughs> first, um, it was reserved for me. Uh, and I appreciate him saving the birthday for me that he now shares with me. Uh, nice. Um, just so we're all clear, your birthday. I've done that one. I, I expect a daily text. I mean, you usually get text of me every day anyway. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll just add that onto the end. P.S. Three twelve. <laughs> Math, let's go, baby. Uh, timeless. Look. Hi bye, <laughs> hi bye. <laughs> Welcome in, Thomas. Uh, okay, we got one more news story before we give you a free day Friday, uh, free day Friday, free game Friday wrap up, and that is for all you Xboxers out there. I don't want to say Xboxers; I mean players on Xbox, not people that used to be in the boxing <laughs> game, but have since retired because you know sporting injuries and growing old. But still, there we go. <laughs> uh, so this is from the official Microsoft slash Xbox website, and this is an announcement written by, I'll just say multiple people uh, in the uh, d departments. Or is it? No, it's just one, actually. It's just long-ass title. Eric Vorais, Principal Product Manager, Player Experience and Platforms. God damn, it was just... Big Eric, well, that's what we'll call him now. So in July, yeah. we announced that we were working with Discord to streamline your, uh, streamline your audio experience so that you can play with friends from all your gaming communities right from your Xbox. Starting today, this was on the 13th, so three days ago, Discord Voice is available on all Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One consoles. With this update, you can now chat with anyone on Discord via voice channels or group calls directly from your console, making it easy to connect with friends across mobile, Xbox, and PC. This means that you'll be able to see who is in the call and speaking while, you're, uh, while you are playing on your console. You'll also be able to adjust the sound and switch between Discord Voice and Xbox Game Chat while you play all your favorite games. 
Uh, to get started, head to the Discord mobile app and link your Discord account to your Xbox. You'll need to do this step even if you've linked accounts before. After that, you can join any Discord voice channel or call and transfer it to your Xbox. Thanks to all our Xbox insiders who get help to give, fee uh, give feedback and help shape the experience. Stay tuned. We're excited to bring more Discord experiences to Xbox in the future. Nice. I mean, this is an infinite win. Xbox mm -hmm. getting Discord despite Sony and PlayStation being the ones that were the ones that were in bed and we're going to get all the apps and, you know, early next year, which was supposed to be early this year, and September the 16th is not early this year. It's pretty near the end. Uh, Xbox have been done it, done it quicker, done it faster, done it great, and everything works perfectly until, uh, yeah. until Wednesday when I was streaming and Timeless, who's just lurked in the chat, informed me that... Um, it works great if you only play games. If you stream games, there is an issue. Anyone that's coming through uh, the console uh, through Discord voice chat, there is no way to pick that up for the stream there at present. That that I assume that will be something that is fixed. Someone's probably yeah. not thought of that. Anyone that was in the Insider program has probably thought oh, they were just in there as, as a player, not as a content creator. I imagine that is something that they will fix out. But even with that all considered, I've seen a lot of people that have streamed from Xboxes or using Xbox chat, and you still don't really get to hear the full uh, voice comms or it's broken or, 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 or whatever. Still a big old win for Xbox getting mm -hmm. Discord. And it's, it's not seamless. You have to enter the call on your mobile and then transfer to Xbox. But everyone, <laughs> everyone playing games uh, these days has a phone nearby. I mean, I'm not... There may be one person who goes, actually, don't have a phone. Okay, great. Grandpa, nice. Uh, everyone has a phone these days. So, easy dubs. And not only that, if you were in a Discord call with your mates before this happened, they would have had their phone anyway with a pair of head uh, headphones, uh, earphones inside their headphones. So, it's just the same yeah. thing, but even easier. Anyway, that's. I imagine we've spoken about this a bunch of times that you'll have a lot of thoughts the same there. But, babe, thoughts? It's very similar. Like... It, it's, it does seem a little bit backwards that you have to transfer it to your console and there isn't just a tab on your, your Xbox that can select Discord and then select what Discord server you want and then it would automatically pick up either your friends list. Um, sorry, roll back. So you click on Discord and it'll show you your online friends list like it does on your PlayStation or your Xbox and you can just jump into a party chat with them or there's an area where it'll say servers, show you the servers that you're a part of and then it'll pick up any of the voice channel servers that are within it. So like, for instance, if it clicked on ours, it'd show like the PUBG, so, uh, PUBG duos, trios or squads, Fortnite duos, trios, squads, uh, pro clubs, up to 11 people can join that. It'd just pick up all of those ones that are available to you. Then, obviously, like you do, you can go into live stream and you get people going into the queue. You can then, on your PC, just drag them into wherever you need, they need to go and it'll move them over. That seems the, the best way moving forward with it. However, at the moment, having to transfer it from your phone, I'm not saying that having it on your phone and then moving it over is just another step. It's not the end of the world, but it just doesn't make it very user-friendly. I imagine that's a... That's a limitation that has to be there. I don't think Xbox or Discord would be like, yeah, this is the greatest thing would be to make people use the app because nobody wants to use the Xbox app. Nobody wants to use the PlayStation app. We use them because they, they, they're helpful, but nobody wants to use them. The same way that we would criticize, that's my Slack, by the way, if anyone's hearing the Slack notifications, it'll probably keep happening. So if it, if it does keep happening, I'll, I'll kill it. But for now, I'll leave it. Um, so... Nobody wants to do that. We have to use the PlayStation app. To... Oh, it's still happening. Okay. Yeet. Back to back. Yeah. Dinner time has finished, Graham. <laughs> Everyone's back to work. End task of push. Just, to, just as that was happening, we've got another one come through. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Nobody wants to use the PlayStation app. We have to use it to get clips that you've just captured in-game that instantly get uh, automatically get uploaded to the server. You can then share them off your phone to other social media outlets. Mm -hmm. It's not great, but it's the way it's working right now. Eventually, ideally, it would work and put it on a, a cloud save that you can access from PC or whatever. Um, and it's just... It's just it's, it's an intermediate step, and I'm, I feel like this is what this is. Until they've developed some way for Xbox to be fully integrated with Discord so that it all works perfectly and you don't need something to do those digital handshakes and, and, and move things around. I think that will be coming. So Xbox did end by saying um, uh, 
stay tuned. We're excited to bring more Discord experiences to Xbox in the future. I mean, there's not really much more need for experiences unless they're going to add chat, like text functions and stuff like that. Um, I think it'd be easy enough to just kind of uh hi bibs and clive <laughs> hey yeah. uh we aren't going to change our name from ice cream and plus to ice cream by the way but we're changing it from ice cream and plus to clive uh that I mean, works drew is unique true suggestion clive stanley was the uh suggestion that we got from two names in the chat so we got clive and we got Good. stanley so clive stanley is kind of what we're going for nice um so yeah i, I reckon i reckon it'll be patched i reckon it'll be fixed and i reckon it'll smoothen it out alan <laughs> steve steve no, alan's milo's alternate name mm -hmm. it's his weekend name now so he, he can't, that's not going to the channel, uh, channel so no me no me nice shirt g thanks ads um yeah uh this is the only shirt i own because i clearly wore it yesterday as i was talking to bib before we started the stream i uh wore it to go to the studio because we were planning to scoop and stuff yesterday but obviously bibby was working on that video and i was doing secret things so mm -hmm. i took, took it off when i got home so i can wear it today for the content instead nice because we, we spoke about the video earlier on today if you want to see the video by the way quick reminder for everyone before we jump into free game friday bibby uh, has had hands on an unreleased game it's this game that i'm wearing a t-shirt of right now pga tour 2k 23 it's not out yet is it mid-october it comes out uh yes so still still another month-ish until the game is out. Um, but Bibby's had hands-on, and not only just with the game, but with the brand new mode as well, the Top Golf mode. We did put a video on YouTube. Um, and I won't say any more because I don't know much more, and Bibby does, but there's some things that he can't say. Not yet, <laughs> yeah. because of NDAs. But, uh, but what we can yeah, do is spam that link into the chat. If anyone is new into the stream uh, that wasn't here at the start of the stream, we did ask, if you don't mind, if you could just go watch that video, it's only it's only three minutes of of your life, and yeah, you have to listen to Babe. I know, I know. but he's but fantastic. But, boys done good. Boys done good. So the video is definitely worth the watch, even if you're not interested in golf. We would appreciate your support in that because obviously every new view, every like on the video, and every comment below the video helps that video be spread to more people, which will help with the growth of the YouTube channel. So if you don't mind going to watch the video. That would be very, very much appreciated. Uh, obviously, you do not have to, but we just appreciate the support. And you guys are always there to support, so that's what we're asking for. Mm. Uh, speaking of support, if you guys need a little bit of support with some free games, we got you. Because this is hashtag... A smooth, smooth. Hashtag... <laughs> free game Friday. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Nice. Uh, so this is Free Game Friday. Do you know what? Uh, if, if anyone wants to uh, clip that, I'm going to see if I can get a nice pristine version. I'm going to set that up as the actual... Uh... Apple lossless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Morgan Parker, PC Gamer, has this. What's free on the Epic Game Store right now? We'll jump down to this week's free game, which is uh, Spirit of the North and the Captain. So it's another week of... Uh, on the Epic Game Store, where the freebies are on offer, are at opposite ends of the spectrum. Spirit of the North is a dialogue-free 3D adventure game where you play as an ordinary run-of-the-mill fox who gradually uncovers the mysteries of a Nordic landscape after being granted supernatural powers by a markedly less-than-ordinary spirit fox. And this week's B-side track is The Captain, a more traditional point-and-click adventure game where you, a space fleet officer stranded at the distant end of the galaxy, need to make your way back to Earth before it's destroyed by a hostile alien force, repairing your ship and gathering crew members along the way. Unclear if there are any helpful spirit foxes in this one, though. So there you go. Spirit of the North, uh, a foxalicious game, and the captain, a space point-and-click game. Nice. Either, nice. Of those, either of those tickle your fancy, babe? No, but I'll redeem them anyway. Uh, I'll probably forget, which then ties me nicely into next week's free mm. game. Someone please remind me. I always forget. I know I remind you, but I'm on stream. If anyone could then follow it up 20 minutes later when we finish the stream, going, oh, great. I know you still at your PC. Just download this game, please. Uh, after the uh, what? Uh, after 4 p.m. on September the 22nd, we will get Ark Survival Evolved. And it's a game I've always wanted to play. Uh, so please remind me of that next week because, yeah, nice. Oh, baby, uh, uh, you're, you're in luck. You just clipped it. There you go. There for posterity. Oh, God. Nice. Uh, do you know what? Whilst we're here, might as well watch it. Go on, volume up full. Nice. <laughs> Free game. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Free game. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> I, I, I giggled too soon. I couldn't have just held it in for a second longer, Graham. God. 
Oh, so there you go. Free game. Mm, mm. Friday. Friday. Mm. Nice. And that's the one in it. That's the one going forward. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, do you know what? And that is it. Let alone that being the one. That is it. We've had a bunch of stories for you today. We started off by talking about Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. They were re revealed at a COD Next event yesterday. We've got a bunch of details. We went through those first and then jumped into Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection hitting PC. That will be hitting PC on October the 19th. We then spoke about Resident Evil Village, a third person being uh, revealed at Tokyo Game Show 2022 and a bunch of other details. And then a story that we shelled from Wednesday. It was Discord is coming to Xbox. Fact check, it's actually there and it works pretty yeah. well as long as you've got a mobile phone. It's not 100% not perfect, but it's not a bad experience. And then we finished up with... Oh, I was going to play it. He's going to play it for you. Let's go. We finished up with hashtag free game Friday. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all night, folks. Let's go, baby. And he will be here all night from 7.30, actually. Baby will be back on the channel at 7.30 p.m. tonight playing Modern Warfare 2. I am aiming to be there as well, if not for all of it, for at least some of it, because I've got the game downloaded and installed at my end too. So that's nice. If anyone does have Good. Modern Warfare pre-ordered, you will have access to the early access of Modern Warfare to beta on PlayStation this weekend. Do sold out Webley gig incoming. It's already sold out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not even incoming. It's yeah. been gone. We've not even put the tickets out and they're already sold out, man. Let's go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, do feel free to join us tonight for that. But before that happens... Yes. Mr. Bib, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, thank you very much to each and every single one of you that have joined us for all the episodes of The Scoop this week. Is it three? Anyway... <laughs> We're hoping to get five out. No, we're not. It is Friday. It's going to be four, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's... No, no. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we're not going to be here on, a, on on Monday. Oh, next week, um, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to help shape the remaining shows next week, then there's two ways you can do so. You should already, you should know this by now. But for those of you that are new around here, there is two ways that you can do so. First of all, find us on social media. It's at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media platforms or alternatively... <laughs> Get involved with our Discord. All the links that you require will be listed in the description below if you're watching this in any of our on-demand services, but only from you is the URL plus your thoughts and impressions. We will then give you our thoughts and impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time? On Tuesday, Mr. Graham Day. That freaked the fuck out of me then. ish that's actually uh i don't did that come through did that come through like with did. all oh, i nice. heard it yeah uh freak the fuck out of me. it's a morgan freeman style voice like like if you know morgan freeman quotes and you can do it it's fucking it's like weird because it actually <laughs> edits your voice on the fly like most voice changes will just change your voice like if i go back to That's just my exact same voice with the tones and stuff changed. That Morgan Freeman narrator voice is weird because it edits the. It doesn't just change the tone; it changes everything. So, like you can, like if I start laughing rather than like if I go ha ha ha, it doesn't go ha ha ha. It goes like and it changes it all around. It sounds fucking weird as well. Anyway, if you get Morgan Freeman quote, it sounds badass. But do you know what else sounds badass? Sticking around for a raid. That's what sounds badass to me. We are going to drop a raid on one of our friends. Do stick around. It's nice to pass on some love to someone else, but also. It sounds like silence. Oh, did it not come through? No. Oh, I, I wondered because there was a broken bit on the uh, um, the uh, stream deck. Anyway, I was trying to say we'll be live at 10 a.m. ish. Nice. For those of you listening on demand, if you wonder why it was all quiet and stuff, it's because voice mod mugged me right off. But there you go. Stick around for the raid, though. You'll get 250 sprinkles. We can help one of our friends. And it's all good to help each other. Until next time, though, have yourselves a beautiful weekend. We'll see you 7.30 p.m. on the channel tonight. Until next time, bye-bye. Stay, 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 frosty. Stay, frosty. <laughs>